Welcome everyone to episode five of the Novid Notes podcast. I'm your host, Novid Player, with hosting many different types of creators, creations, as well as you know different types of content creators of VR Chat. Once again, I'm your host, and today we got another special guest, uh, the lovely Vanessa Wolf. Vanessa, welcome in. Hi yo. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, you know. So really quick, you know, just for the listeners at home, you know, or wherever they are, uh, give them a brief explanation about what you do inside of VR chat and who exactly is Vanessa Wolf. Well, as the name goes, I'm Vanessa Wolf. I am a um, electronic music producer, um, VTuber, content creator, um, as well as a common VR chat role player. That kind of more or less sums me up. <laughs> heck yeah, heck yeah. So you know. <laughs> as you as you stated, you do you know music and you know content creation inside of VR chat, um, and I, oh. obviously <laughs> you know obviously I've I've worked with you a little bit on certain things, um, but you know f- when I guess the first question I got to ask is is you know when did you start doing like music production? Oh boy, uh, <laughs> back when I was a wee lass. Uh... <laughs> So I started. I started back um, all the way back in actually elementary school. Um, this started out where um, they used to have extracurricular activities that we did um, almost every week. They would rotate, so it would be like you had um, PE. You had um, I don't remember the third one. I think it was PE art class, and then you had um, orchestra class. And that's where I started, is I started in orchestra class. I first started with violin, because in elementary school, they didn't really let you pick what instrument you played. They just kind of assigned you one and everything. And I got assigned into the violins. Um, and then middle school hit, we actually got to choose it. And I had the same teacher, luckily, because they worked at both my elementary school and my middle school. So I already knew them really well. Um, but yeah, I went from violin over to viola in middle school and then after obviously both of those years were up um during that time uh i got a gift from my nana which was an electric keyboard so i started playing that and all throughout high school which i did online schooling uh for high school um i really had no other instruments to play so i would mess around with the keyboard make songs out of that and then that evolved into doing electronic music gotcha you know that i mean first of all like whenever i think like elementary school middle school i don't think like violins and violas that that's news to me like i i we had like (laughs) at least in elementary school like we had recorders you know common common united states you know type shit (laughs) yeah well in 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 my middle school the orchestra thing was not a choice for me in elementary that's just kind of what they assigned me um but in middle school you were actually able to choose we had multiple different paths you can take you can take band you could go to woodwinds you can do um there there was like band there was um choir that, that's what it was that was the word i was looking for so it was either band choir or orchestra you were able to pick out of those three of which one you wanted to do and since i already knew orchestra at the time because of my elementary school days i just picked that one <laughs> Because it was something I was already used to. Hmm. No, that's yeah. No, that's that's crazy that your school like offered that. That's pretty impressive for a school to offer. You yeah. know, such a uh, what's the word? I guess not not like advanced, but like you know, more variety of instruments. I guess is what I'm looking for. So you, you know, you've done music since you were wee lass. Um, but like, when did you actually start mm-hmm. like producing your own music? That mainly started when I first got my hands on that keyboard. Um, a lot of it at the time, I was like, you know, obviously in orchestra, we usually just had sheet music that we did and everything. And I never really had that much of a creativity on violin or viola and how to make my own music with that. And, you know, at school, they were more like trying to teach you how to be, you know, the teamwork of an orchestra. So we typically would rather practice the sheet music we were given. Um, so when I got that keyboard from my Nana back in the day, it was like, that was my major break of like, you know, being an independent creator. And so that was kind of my whole spark of learning how to create my own music. Interesting. 
So, like, if I had to take, like, a guess of age range, like, what, like, you said around middle school, that's, like, what, 14, 15, give or take? Um, About that age, I think it actually started, like, closer to 12 or 13. I, I can't remember. My memory's a little hazy. But, yeah, no, it was it was a while ago, and, yeah, no, like, absolutely fell in love with that. I used to create some of my own, like, original tracks on the keyboard, very simplistic things, and then, you know, it that evolved into learning how to do sampling and electronic, like, based software creation, and obviously biggest discovery, which, like, got me into the whole thing, was Porter Robinson, which is, like, one of the biggest inspirations to my music. So... If it wasn't for him and me like doing the research and learning how he did his stuff, I wouldn't create the music that I did today. Gotcha. So, you know, you, you, you've had music for almost almost all your life, essentially. Um, you know, and you, you've put mm-hmm. tracks out on like, you know, YouTube and, you know, honestly, very good listens. I I'm, I'm highly recommend it. Uh, we'll put links in the description. Um, but anyways, um, you know. When did you start posting, like, what? when did you post, I guess, your first song, like, out to the public? Oh, I'd have to, I'd have to look back on my channel. Um, that, yeah, no, I definitely have to look back on the date, but it, it's been, uh, I think, a couple years now. Um, but yeah, no, it, like, started off as, like, a thing of, like, I discovered this new software. Um, it was a browser-based thing. Um, it, it's called Soundtrap. It's like an Australian, um, it's like an Australian music making software and everything. It used to be very different than what it is today. Like nowadays, it's like this whole thing, like Google Drive or something, where you set up a project and you can invite people into it. Um, which it had collaborative efforts, but originally it actually had like its own thing where you can post the music on the website itself, and people can discover you that way. And that's what I did a lot. Um, like back when I was first learning how to make music on this software it was like i I would post it to their website and i found a bunch of other people that had accounts on soundtrap they heard my music and i've collabed with them several times you could probably look this up but one of like the earliest videos that i know is out there on youtube that somebody i met on that software um posted is there's a song called willow fluff and it was like a collaboration with me that uh, the person that posted it and like three other people there was like five of us that all made this song together and it was like the biggest collaboration i've ever done in my life at that point oh wow still technically is the biggest collaboration i've done fair enough yeah no it's definitely you know to have five uh five different artists working on the same project like that's that's pretty cool <laughs> definitely definitely something yeah, worthwhile no, it, it was yeah, no, it was crazy. It was like everybody was from everywhere too. It was like I think the main dude, if I remember correctly, I think he was from Australia. And then you had like a bunch of other people. I think we had like two people, including myself, like that were NA. Um, and then I think like one of the person was in somewhere in Europe. I don't remember exactly where. But yeah, no, like we all just met each other like on this app and everything. Like this dude just brought all these people together and we just all got into this project and like let's make a song together. And yeah, you could probably find it somewhere on YouTube. It's uh, if I remember correctly, the song is called a Willow Fluff or something. <laughs> we'll we'll have it we'll have it down in the description. Um, but yeah, no, it's yeah. I'll see if I have to find it. and I'll link it to you. <laughs> heck, heck yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so <sighs> music is, and and this is something I've always stated. Um, because obviously I do music as well. Um, you know, if you had to say one opinion, um about music as i guess not i don't want i don't want to say an entity but like you know if you had to say one thing about music you know to maybe like if you had to tell the world one thing about music what would it be and why hmm that's actually a tough one um if i had to sum it down music is art that's like the best way i can word it like everyone all when you when you say the word art everyone immediately like their brain goes to you know paintings like using oil paints and on a blank canvas music is 
It's a, it's an art. It's a story. It's whatever you want it to be. It's so it's so free to what like you're able to do with something like music. You're able to portray so much of not only yourself but like whatever it is you're feeling at that time or what like story you want to make or get across like you can do all of that without using words or using actors on a film you can do all of that with just by displaying the emotions you place in the song definitely a definitely a wise way to look at it you know i i, I and i totally yeah i totally agree with that you know music is you know music is one of the way, many ways of communication that is often forgot um you know music is it's not like a you know it's not like a national thing you know it's a it's a global thing you know with so many different types of styles and you know genres and you know lyricism romanticism you know classical you know and great i'm going to like the olden stuff of course but you know there's i'm getting a knock on my door (laughs) shit how how dare (laughs) Sorry, we'll just cut it in post. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Just want to pause the episode real quick. Want, first of all, I want to thank you so much for listening, watching, whatever platform you may be watching this on. Um, thank you. It means the world to me. Um, I do want to say, if you would like to support me and my ventures when it comes to the Nova Notes podcast, um, I did create a Ko-Fi um, And a Ko-Fi, essentially, for those that don't know, is essentially a way for you to support me. Um, Obviously, this is not, you know, warranted, but I've been asked if there was, you know, any way to support me on my ventures. So I went ahead and created a Ko-Fi. So go to ko-fi.com slash Noved Player, and you can feel free to um, tip whatever you'd like, uh, anything from a dollar or to, (laughs) very unlikely, but, you know, 20 or more. You know, I, w- I want to thank each and every one of y'all for supporting me, whether it's just listening to the podcast, you know, so thank you. And maybe I'll start put- putting out some uh, exclusive content on the Ko-Fi, uh, depending on how it plans out. But thank you once again. Let's get back to the episode. And we're back. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> but yes, no, music, you know, music is a lost art, you know, and it's it's a way of communication doesn't matter what language you speak, you know, where you're from, what you, has happened in your life. Music is art, you know, as you stated. Um, it's definitely, definitely a way that people as a society, you know, can unify, you know. And that's something I, I very much believe, um, you know. So, obviously, you know, you, you, you've made music, you know, that's... We've talked, we've, we've, we said it a bunch now and now I'm just repeating myself. Um, you know, we, we went over that, but you know, obviously with VR chat specifically, you know, you, you've done, you know, live performances, you know, uh, whether it be like with small communities or like big events or even like giant, you know, like giant events, you know, what, what is it like, you know, going from, going from a musician to a performer of this nature like to be perfectly honest like it's surreal honestly like if you if you told like 10 year old me and everything that i would later be able to get the opportunity to do live performances and like actually live dj like in a space like this like in a place known as virtual reality is like it's something I can 100% guarantee you I would not have believed you. It's so crazy of, like, how much this has impacted my life of just, like, being able to get on this platform and, like, being able to provide these shows for people. And as you mentioned, like, doing it for small communities, doing it for, like, groups of friends, doing it for large-scale events, like, all all of it, it's, it's crazy. Like, it started out like with when it came to that thing i started off with only like just doing small little you know cool things showing off music i make to my friends on here and everything got a soundboard to do just that um and then that involved into like 
me later on like first community of music groups that i've learned was like midnight melodies and that was like from vrcon that i found that group and everything i like joined their community went to their events quite a bit and then biggest one i joined after that was artifacts um which rest in peace artifacts they were an amazing group i like you'll never be forgotten it was such an amazing group while it lasted um but yeah no like artifacts meeting two step like and getting introduced to artifacts was like the biggest most coolest thing to me like meeting all these like-minded individuals that enjoy music as much as they do all the people that were like also fantastic in writing and creating poems things like that like it was such an amazing group and like that also evolved into getting the chance of like you know performing with vket and everything like something i never got to do before because before i used to help them back in the early stages with like content creation and you know doing the collab streams with them but i never got into them music wise and music vk5 like having the actual doing not only get my booth there but also to have a live performance with them was like the biggest honor i could ever say i got yeah, absolutely. No, I mean, and for those that are listening that may not be familiar with uh, VCAT, uh, VCAT is essentially, it's called, the full name is Virtual Market, um, and essentially vast, you know, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, um, it's essentially a vast across the globe, um, and it's a huge event inside of VR chat that has many... <laughs> it's a tracking huge... issues yeah <laughs> <laughs> Booper reel. um but essentially you know it, it's a giant event that goes on for a while um that people can shop for things that are like vr related or um you know, sponsor related with them um and they also have music vcat you know and it shows off many different uh styles of music throughout the world um and mm -hmm. you know they'll do live performances um and all sorts of stuff you know so definitely go check out uh you know if you get whenever the next virtual market is because i'm very bad with dates it'll pop up somewhere but um i don't know if i can disclose too much but um i will say the stuff that they have said already on stream from the global team um it will be in i believe it's july for uh, july is when they're doing summer for yeah, this year? Sounds, that sounds about right. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know the. I don't remember the exact dates, and I don't remember if they gave those out yet. But um, yeah, it, it seems like either like, um, like sometime late June or July, I think is when they're doing summer V kit. Um, <laughs> and yeah, and and that's kind of generally when they usually do it. Um, but yeah, like I think you explained it decently well. It, it's a little more complicated. <laughs> Yeah, than, no, like I'm, being able to sum it up like that. It's the it's the brief <laughs> it's the brief summary. Uh, Lon, if you're watching this, you can shoot me later. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, or <laughs> you know what? I would love to have you on the podcast, Lon. You know, come DM me on Twitter or Discord, one or the other. We'll talk. Um, we'll do a whole B Cat episode. <laughs> best believe. Um, anyway, sorry. That'd be amazing. Yeah, That'd be amazing to get him <laughs> on here. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, but yeah, Lon is an amazing guy. <laughs> he is actually um br bringing it back a little bit to the music stuff actually lun was the main one that introduced me about the whole music community in vr chat would you believe that no i, I didn't actually. um this is the first time hearing this yeah so so back when i first started and everything which was like back in late 2018 early 2019 um one of the first few people i met was lun and yui um and this was before they were like part of the global team everything because that wasn't even a thing yet um yeah but like i i met both of them before the global team became a thing and one i knew from a lot of the music scene because he i would usually find him in like dj worlds like shelter vr underground like all of those groups he would go to those parties a lot and so i would see him there so he was like the one that first got me to know that like the music uh, the music community as well as like the dj community was like such a hot thing in here like in its early stages and like after that it just like exploded into meeting all these other groups and people so yeah like one i I really like if there's anyone i have to think about introducing me to the music community in vr chat alone it's one because without him i wouldn't even know it existed 
Fair enough. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I mean, VR chat's a huge, you know, huge platform, you know, to, so to be introduced to such a big platform like VR chat, um, it's definitely mind blowing, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you, I go, you can get overwhelmed thing. very quickly. Oh, easy. You can get overwhelmed very quickly of like what there is, especially when you're starting out and like the most, you know, is like public lobbies. And like, that that's why, that's why I kind of enjoy doing what I do a lot. Uh, not only with VKit, but like a lot of these other communities, like Artifacts, um, PGKT, uh, um, VKit, like all of these ones. Like I, I enjoy having these opportunities to promote these communities um, to new people because it's like when you first start out, all you're gonna like all you're gonna know about this game a lot is commonly like you know public lobbies where people are like screaming and like super fucking chaotic <laughs> part of my language but no yeah. you're good you're good it's, it's an 18 plus it's all right you're good no um yeah no, yeah, it's... yeah yeah but like yeah no it's like but giving them the opportunity to actually like kind of take a breather from all that and learn about the beauty that vr chat has to offer is like the biggest thing i love doing to, uh, and like love helping people with because there's so much here but you just have to look under the surface to find it all yeah, absolutely. You know, and it's it's one of those things that, you know, if if you're just a regular or if you're a brand new VR chat player, there's no um and this is something that I've always thought of like putting in the feedback section of their little like, you know, blogs or whatever. You know, if there was a way to properly introduce people to communities, like, I feel like groups is great. Don't get me wrong. You know, groups, I love the groups thing. Um, but to a brand new VR chat player, they're not going to know what groups are. They're just going to see, you know, whatever is in the world's tab, you know, and just go from there. Well, I, I mean, it's it's a step in the right direction with groups because, like, obviously, with oh, of course. the biggest thing that, like, exists now and how communities are getting their names out there is doing group public instances mm -hmm. and everything like having those in and having the actual people like there to moderate it and also like get to introduce you to them is like such a smart way of like trying to get yourself out there to the main public and everything and obviously like having the conventions that allow you to promote that as well is very helpful but obviously those are a little more underground and you don't really know about them too often the only major one that I think a lot of people would kind of know about this game is VKit because they actually get like, you know, an actual tab in the menu yeah. every time that they're out, every time that they're around. So. Which, I mean, it would be cooler for like, you know, it, it would be really cool if these other conventions got their own spotlight like that. But that's a whole that's a whole nother topic. You know, that, that could that could be a, like hours yeah, long yeah, topic. Yeah. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so back in back into the Vanessa Wolf scene, um, you know, you, you've done music, but you know, and uh, obviously all the links will be below. Like I said, you know, but you know what people don't know, uh, or at least yet, um, there's gonna be a lot of cutting of me flubbing up my words. I'm already saying that right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh you know you also do dancing as well nah, keep them in keep the scuffs nah. <laughs> yes i do actually that, yeah. I, I failed to mention that yeah um and uh, when i was introducing myself but yes i am a vrc um vr chat dancer I, out of curiosity what what dragged you into the the dancing scene in vr chat well that's another similar case of where it started with real life i was I grew up uh, basically around the time I got interested in dancing was actually, you know, when the whole spark of the new style of dancing to dubstep was a thing, the isolation style. Um, I used to watch somebody by the name of Marquis Scott or Nonstop. Uh, he was one of the first people that like kind of had the whole like isolation style and dubstep style of dancing like blow up and everything because like one of the most infamous videos that kind of helped it blow up was him doing uh marcus scott doing a video to the dubstep remix of um pumped up kicks and everything and yeah like so when dubstep was like early on still blowing up skrillex was like the biggest name out there in dubstep at the time <laughs> um <laughs> yeah like 
I, I watched him how to do that. And then as like time went on, I kept watching his content, enjoying what he did. Um, soon enough, my brain started ha picking up the skill to be able to pick apart how he's doing the dance moves. And I've learned how to do that style just from watching him, um, like watching his videos. And, and like, like after that, I learned how to do that, started doing that in real life. And um, lo and behold, COVID hits. Don't get to do much outside of my, you know, job working at a convenience store at the time. Um, and so I didn't really get to do much and didn't really have a way other than my music to kind of, you know, share that I had this. And so I get into VR chat a lot more often when the height of COVID hits and I meet a friend, uh, a very good friend of mine now. Um, I meet someone by the name of Forsetten he was somebody that showed me that dancing in vr chat with a brick on your face is possible <laughs> <laughs> um because he's a ballroom dancer and so he like um if so, a, any of you have seen like um anyone has ever gotten a glimpse of me dancing one of the things i do is i do a flying trick with my play space mover where i turn on the gravity and i fling myself up in the air and everything doing spins and stuff like that I all learned that from him because that's what he did with his ballroom style. Um, but yeah, that was like the case is like he taught me about how to do dancing in VR chat, learning how to learn your play space well enough to do that without having to glance at where you are um, and everything. And obviously the only difference he was, he has a wireless headset set up, so he doesn't have to worry about a cord. That was more problem solving for me and learning how I can do that. And that's why a lot of my trick uh, when I'm doing spins and everything, I will spin one direction and then do the opposite, which will basically cause it to where I never really get tangled in my cord. That, that's pr that's very um, convenient. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's kind of my always my rule is when I do a spin, I'm always like spinning one way and then it always ends up where I may do a couple dance moves in between it, but then I eventually rotate back out the other way. So then, you know, my core doesn't get wrapped around my leg and I end up tripping. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, uh, as somebody uh, who's uh, had many different cord issues, <laughs> uh, I can relate <laughs> any, anytime uh, yeah. things are broken. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, like, I owe a lot of it to SETI uh, for, like, teaching me how to do all this stuff and, like, learning how to do that. And then I obviously just, like, took that knowledge, incorporated the styles I already knew how to do IRL that I was learning with, like, isolation. Um, at this time, I learned isolation. I learned hip-hop, um, electro swing, and everything. Like, I learned how to do those three styles, and I was like, I can start doing this in VR chat and showing it off. And lo and behold... First time outside of friends that I started uh, showing that I can do this, like outside of practice, um, was the first ever VRCon. Um, they did a talent show um, signed up event, and me and Forsetten, we signed it together to do a duet, and we did it to um, we did it to Hiding in the Blue from the Fat Rat and everything, and got to like really show off both of our skills like to a live audience, and it was honestly the most fun I've had. Out of VR con events, <laughs> like yeah, th there's a lot of fun moments that I remember having in VR con, but that one like cemented, like that that one's like forever cemented in my mind. And you actually see a reference to that in a video that you helped me with on my channel, um, which was to celebrate the 10 years of VR chat and the one year of PJKT um, that I did, um, where we went to that same VR con stage uh, back in 2020. And we basically recreated that duet. And that was like solidifying that memory of like the first time I ever publicly showed my dancing in VR chat. Hmm. And it was a fantastic video, by the way. And I'm not saying that because I did it. It, <laughs> it was, it was a fun time to record and edit. Um, you know, it was amazing. So many people like you, you like did amazing work with the editing and the filming um, socks as well. Got a lot of amazing shots that we were able to use. Um, and then Seti, obviously, like, phenomenal dancer and everything. Like, it, I, I, I love his work. Yeah, no, it was, it, was, it was a fun time. Highly recommend going to watch the full video. There will definitely be clips throughout the episode, so you'll see bits and pieces, but if you want to see the full video, you know, go down to the description or over there in the description if you're on Spotify. Um, 
but yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, I and I obviously like a lot of people, including myself, have seen you know you dance and stuff, and uh, it's all been positive from what I've seen. I don't, I don't know <laughs> shit about dancing. You want to talk about you, you want to talk about positive stuff? Oh, you, you should have been there when I did the dances for both. Well, you were there when I did it for Coach Noyakas's anniversary. Um, obviously, like that was a whole shindig everyone enjoyed that and i'm so happy they did um and on top of that like the biggest one that i would say was like the biggest compliment i've ever gotten was wife of air they did their anniversary event with cocho they did like a whole collab thing um for an anniversary event um and for me like being a big fan of not only wife of air but also a member of cocho um i was like well if i did it for cocho i, I should do it for wife of air and that's what I did. I did an entire German song. Like I actually looked up like prior to this event, I looked up the entire translation of it so I can use the lyrics to my dancing. Um, and yeah, like did an entire German song, uh, did the whole flying around to it. It was a Celtic song too. First time I've ever done those. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it was a Celtic song. It, it's by, by a German group known as Fawn, um, F-A-U-N, if you're interested and everything really good group make amazing celtic style music um i love it and everything i love their music so i gotta even I gotta if i ask. don't understand half the words sometimes fair <laughs> I, I, I gotta ask because you know like i gotta i gotta meme where i can did you wear a kilt <laughs> i was in my cultural avatar so no ah! i was in a business suit <laughs> fair dang missed opportunity um <laughs> Um. <laughs> yeah no um so yeah no but like ultimately no that was like the biggest thing and later on i joined waifu bear after that and funny enough i switched into my kocho avatar when i was memeing with yuki um after one of our missions together was done and somebody literally walked up and like freaked out that i was the person that did that dance because they recognized the kocho avatar <laughs> oh wow no that's cool that's cool <laughs> No, it, it was honestly amazing, and I love Waifu Fair to death. I love Kocho to death. Like, there's such amazing communities and everything, and, like, they are so supportive of anything that, like, people do. If you're an avatar creator, music creator, dancer, like, everything that you do is, like, they are so supportive of, and it's amazing. Mm, yeah, no, I, they definitely are. Um, <laughs> you know, and what's, uh, you know, it's really cool to, like, that you vast yourself in different types of you know music and art you know with art of dance art of music you know it's, it's definitely it's definitely cool to get that experience um you know yeah. you said you kind of started around covid era time you know um which is at least from what i concerned you know was one of the bigger booms of vr chat because everyone was stuck inside you know they had nowhere to go mm -hmm. so what did they do they got a vr headset well, and you, slapped it, them on yeah well if you weren't like having an essential job like i i like fortunately had one so i was still working i had a i worked at a convenience store and everything um small little convenience store inside of i think it's just a lot of it's in western states um it's known as circle k oh yeah yeah yeah. um circle k is everywhere yeah. um <laughs> but yeah no yeah circle k it, it probably is now i i think when i worked there it was a little more of a west more of a western thing than anything but i i don't remember um it's been a little while mm -hmm. but uh yeah no it, it's like yeah i was still a central worker so i i worked there and then when i got home like everything was closed down so i was like what do i do <laughs> and everything and it was like so yeah i, I started playing vr chat a lot more obviously i started before the COVID hit, like, as in I started in 2018, 2019, like, before it, COVID was a, even a thing. Um, I started there, didn't play it super often, because I didn't own a headset, and, like, obviously, I was just a desktop user at the time, mostly. Um, and, yeah, that was, like, the case. It was just, I didn't really get, um, I, I didn't find as much fun in VRChat at the time, um, compared to other games. So I didn't play it much. Um, and then the COVID hit, I didn't have much else to do, and the, I didn't own very many games on PC, so it was like, I was just, games were starting, starting to get a little stale playing over and over. So I was like, you know what, I, I'm going to give VRChat a second chance, and like, that's when I just fell in love with it, and I would get on almost every single day. Yep. 
I would say there's pretty much not a day that I don't see you <laughs> online. So I, I, I believe that still holds oh, true. Yet. <laughs> it very much is. I, I don't get on it as like as often as I did back in COVID, but I mean like I still love this game to death. I'm in several different communities that I love spending time with as much as I can. And like that, that's just how it is. It's like just this is more or less VR chat has become more than just a social VR game for me. This is like a second life at this point for me, and I absolutely love it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I feel like a lot of the VR chat community can, you know, agree with that. Um, I mean, yeah, you know, you, you went from playing on desktop, you know, to essentially becoming a full body user that does amazing creations, you know, from music to dance to, um, you know, p- performing, on big event, <laughs> performing on big events, shush, um, performing on big events, working with <laughs> communities, you know, being on stage of like VR con project community, you know, it, it it's crazy to look back, you know, when you first start to where, you know, where this episode airs, um, which will probably be the biggest, the biggest connection that started it all. Biggest connection that started it all was literally laser dome. <laughs> that was it. It started the first community I ever joined was laser dome. Um, and like that just started a downward spiral, uh, like a, a just like entire spiral of just meeting a bunch of cool people. Because like with Laser Dome, I started uh, doing the tournaments and stuff like that, and joining their community. Absolutely fell in love with Laser Dome. Can't wait for Laser Dome too, <laughs> uh, when that comes out. But um, yeah, like it started with Laser Dome, and by like pure chance and coincidence, like before VRCon was a thing, I met Fizzy. And everything like through laser dome and like we became decent good friends at the time i don't hang out with them as much, as nearly as often as i used to and everything um but like yeah no i met him and then like got into vr con and then obviously i met lun and yui um in my earlier years than that and they started like after v kit started forming the global team they asked me to be one of the first few people to start coming on and helping them with not only video projects but one of the first um collab streamers that was in na oh yeah and yeah uh, if you want to explain what exactly a collab streamer is you know just kind of give the uh, listeners some context Yeah, so for Virtual Market, every year that they come on, there's a sign-up that they post. It's on their Twitter and on their um, official websites. Uh, Whenever it's available, you can sign up to be a collab streamer. And what a collaborative streamer basically does, what their goal is, is they get assigned a world, and they get assigned a specific world that they're supposed to stream, and whenever they stream VCAT stuff, they don't get, you know, obviously they get the... um, they have a copyright agreement where they don't get flagged for anything, thankfully. I- I'm so glad they do that for us. Oh, yeah. Um, and, yeah, no, it- it- it's you don't get flagged for any copyright things, um, especially in their corporate worlds. And on top of that, like, you know, they give you promotion of your channel while you're streaming and everything. And that's, like, the whole thing of what they did, and they've done it for years now. Um, so, yeah, if you really want an opportunity to grow like as a uh vr uh, vr chat streamer or things like that like i really highly recommend signing up for collab streams with vcat because it, it is a big way to get your name out there and it's super amazing of how well they work with you and obviously as i mentioned your entire goal is like for um for most people um you're assigned one world and then you basically are assigned to stream one world and then once you stream that world you you can basically be done with your collab as for me which is something i did like back when they first started global team it was a more common standpoint to do um and i still do to the day i make it a whole week thing where i go through every single map that vcat does and for that whole week like lun and you like that global team shadow sensei all of them are super amazing people to work with and like even if you're only meant to stream for one day they will do their absolute best to still promote you if you go beyond that one day which is like amazing like they are such an amazing team super supportive for everybody that they work with yeah which is absolutely you know that's 
that's awesome that they're so supportive of their collaborative streamers. Um, but yeah, virtual market. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, no. So, you know, you, you've worked with communities, you've done music, you know, dance the night away. Um, you know, something else that you also do, you also do like videography and content creation as well as we, uh, kind of, we kind of touched base on a little bit over, you know, last 40 minutes, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, it, let's yes. go a little bit, <laughs> let's go a little bit more in depth on that, you know? So you've worked, you've worked with, you know, different communities and events. Um, what essentially, you know, obviously you have your inspiration of music, your inspiration of dance. So what inspired you to do like videography and like, you know, um, like content creation? Well, I think it all starts with like how I've always been. And this goes into music. This goes into my dancing, everything. Everything has an opportunity to not only create a dance or a track or, you know, like things like that. What everything, at least in my eyes, what I look at it is, everything is a way to write a story. And I've always enjoyed, like, writing stories. Which is kind of ironic, considering the fact that I didn't really like reading as a kid, <laughs> but I always enjoyed writing. Um, but yeah, no, like, writing stories is always something I've always loved doing. And I do that, like, having these platforms of being able to do that is, like, the way I just, like, love expressing my creativity. I make music tracks, which like express my emotions or tell a story. I have dancing, which is also a story based thing. Um, like all of my dancing, they have a small story to it. Whether you get it or not is not the point of when I do them. Because when I make the story, I try to make it vague where it's meant to portray to you. You're, you're basically the audience is meant to the individual within the audience is able to look at a dance and relate that to them in some way and everything. So like hiding in the blue is a very prime example like during that dance and everything like i'm gonna trail off a little bit here uh during that dance that duet that me and seti did um we had this whole story together that the two times when we're dancing together the story is that we're two sides of the same person and everything it's one person hiding in the blue one wants to continue escaping reality and keep hiding in the blue while the other is trying to face the reality that they were a soldier that was in a war that devastated the ground below them and during that whole story while we're doing the duet the whole story that we're telling is that both of them start at odds with each other and then they slowly start to accept each other's positions and become one that was the entire story we built for ourselves but we never tell the people the story that we're tr making with the music or with our dances because our goal is to have it relate to them however they want to relate it to and like yeah there, there's a small little insight of how like me and Frizetin do our dancing it, it's all a story that we're telling um on top of that like same thing goes for videography like i enjoy writing stories so obviously one of the biggest ones that i fell in love with is films and everything like growing up I don't watch as much film as I used to, but like growing up, I, I was a big fan of like The Matrix, Lord of the Rings, like all these super crazy story type like films. And like that, that was the case for me is like I, I just enjoyed films like those. And so having the opportunity to actually be able to do that was another fun thing. And all that mostly started with VKIT, like I mentioned. Um, with VKIT, when Global Team was first being formed, they didn't have a big team. They still don't have much of a big team. Um, but it's definitely gotten bigger over the years. Um, but as far as, like, a lot of it at the start, they only mainly had, like, Shadow Sensei, Lun, and Yui that was doing the, a lot of the Global Team stuff. And so they would ask a lot of friends to go in and help them make videos, and I was one of those people. So I, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't really got into the um body acting business and like being in front of camera and everything obviously there there was times i was beforehand um there's a small small known channel out there i don't know if he makes content still um i started out when it came to anything film wise it's actually started back in destiny the game mm -hmm. um if you're familiar with it 
um i it started out with destiny because i had a i met a friend there his name was is um i don't know if he's still around his name is the splash army um he did destiny machinimas and everything he he like learned how to do this whole glitch where you're able to turn your gun invisible and basically become a roman camera um and so i later became part of his team and i learned how to do body acting there on a controller and then later on vr just like was like now i get to use my actual body and I'd learned that from like Lun and Yui and everything with working them on those videos. And then as time went on, I was like, kept doing body acting. And I was like, I want to know how to do all of this behind camera. And that cuts into the present where now I have the opportunity. I've been self-taught, uh, like self-teaching myself how to do that. And then now I learned from Wolveeps, uh, um, which is the director at media of PGKT. And everything like she now teaches me a lot of the stuff that she knows. I didn't know if you were finished with your sentence or if something cut off. I was just I was, I was waiting for the. No, 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 I was just, no. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm, I'm done. No, yeah, yeah, no, you know, it's it's definitely wild to think, you know, of like all the different things that could be done. But like you said, you know, going from a controller to actual virtual reality using your, you know, hands, legs, everything, you know, it's definitely a step up. It's definitely a different type of, and now I'm know, known experience. for falling. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm absolutely known in every single PGKT video of being the clumsy one that either falls off branches or blocks. I'm not True. even kidding with that. <laughs> yeah. No, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to slap I, a I video am... right here for it. Post that or Nova, get to work. Yeah, no, I am absolutely just just get like a whole compilation of every time that I've fallen in a video. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm basically like the notorious PGKT stunt double at this yeah. point. <laughs> like I've done so much stuff. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's uh, it's definitely you know it's definitely a whole nother thing. Um, it's definitely an experience that I I recommend if if physically able, you know, for anybody to at least try out. And you know, there's actually you know tons of communities that do that type of stuff you know uh when it comes to like filming you know in videography and vr um you know it, it's just amazing stuff those are for other episodes yeah it's it's definitely you know it's it's interesting to see you know and that's why essentially obviously like i've had my homies on the podcast my arms are frozen i've had my homies on the podcast yeah but I get to meet so many cool creative individuals on the podcast, you know, and that's why I made the podcast to essentially showcase, you know, the different types of creators in VR. And it doesn't matter where they're from, what their background is, you know, people in VR are amazing. You know, 80% of people in VR are amazing. I just want to want to preface that. Um, <laughs> you got to meet the right people. A lot, a lot of the creative minds. Yeah, a lot of the creative minds like um that I've met and also like a lot of actual famous people that are like known for this stuff is like actually on this platform. Like um good two prime examples that I know exist. Um Porter Robinson himself. He actually plays VR chat. Did you know that? I did. I did. <laughs> yeah, no, he actually he actually plays VR chat. Um I'd love to meet the man if I ever got the opportunity. Um, such a big inspiration. Um, on top of that, like a lot of the Hollow Life and like a lot of especially VTubers, like they play this game a lot. <laughs> like Which... Gaguda is on this like almost every single night. True. Which is a good segue because you're a VTuber <laughs> yourself. Yes. You know, yes, I am. I, I've been doing that for probably like out, out of everything out of my experience, that's like the least I have. <laughs> fair inexperience is VTubing. <laughs> that no that's fair because like i the best i got is a png <laughs> tuber and it's mediocre at best so i don't i don't blame you on that <laughs> i don't blame you on that one um you know so you know you do streaming you do vtubing as well you know is it kind of the same preface of like you know telling stories or is there you know a different reason why you started like streaming and vtubing well, the VTubing was a lot because I do like writing stories. Um, that was one reason. Two, I've always been a little bit of a private person. I don't, I don't tell too much about my private life, um, like outside of friends and obviously. Um, 
and that's just because you know for me i i, I just you know it, there's a little bit of anxiety there here and there at times so i just don't share my private life too much and, and vtubing was like kind of my way of like you know being able to still kind of max myself because i never used a webcam and everything like i've never showed my face um in any platform like even back when i wasn't even a vtuber i used to stream on the playstation uh, on the playstation 4 because like you know that had the built-in streaming system that's where i started um and like that started my whole main career and then obviously i was like well i don't want to like start moving on to doing a webcam and stuff because i still like my privacy a little bit and yeah, so i was like well vtubing started becoming a hot topic and i was like well what if i start that and everything and it just worked in tandem i started with a male model like i actually started as a png tuber with a male model um and then obviously as time went on where i was spending more time in vr chat moved to pc gaming i was like you know i started discovering i wanted to be trans and so i moved on to i moved on to a female model which got upgraded courtesy of my friend uh senpai sama and everything he's from like the first og friend group that i've met in this game uh they're mm -hmm. known as the flu squad and everything um started with a another streamer uh slash vtuber their name is um it's jesse um she was originally known as um hey it's xenix her original name was xenix but yeah no she was another trans um person who was doing vtubing um before i was and you know seeing her do that and discovering i wanted to be trans as well um and everything was like, you know, I basically just went and approached her and just said, like, how do I get into this industry? And so, like, I learned the ins and outs of, like, how to start VTubing. So did that. We had Senpai Sama that I mentioned. He was, like, the artist of our friend group and everything. I commissioned him to make, like, the original art of my male model, which I was PNG tubing at the time. And then I asked him later on down the line to upgrade it to a female model, and that became Vanessa Wolf, which is like the cyberpunk bartender that you see in like a lot of my media. Um, obviously outside of my YouTube because I use this model for that. Because technically, in tandem, I have two characters in one lore, but that's conversation for another time because that would take forever <laughs> to describe the lore of my VTuber because it is so crazy. Um, Sounds like you got a YouTube that was video to me, make. Because like, I... oh boy, like if I actually try to make an entire video on her lore, oh god, that would be like an entire like that would be an entire film in itself. Like making all of that. Do it, Miss Editor Lady. <laughs> and it's still <laughs> <laughs> the, like. And here's the thing: it's not even done. Like I'm not even done writing it. It's still like expanding as time goes on like to sum it up what it is this version of my model which is known for the color scheme of black white and red and everything this is her origin her quote original form and everything and the one that you see that's the black uh like the brunette with um like black white and green and purple color scheme that was after she changed her identity was like the whole story and there's like obviously like stuff that spans in between that but going into detail would take forever um and that's just like the clear basis of just that part of her and there's like so much more backstory that i haven't even like gotten to finish the writing and that's the thing is i just enjoy i i love having this never-ending story of her um and, and that's like the biggest compassion that i have of it is writing her story and yeah like I, I think I mentioned before, like obviously one of the other skills I want to eventually learn into doing is making worlds in VR chat and everything. And one of the ideas I had, um, inspired by somebody that is amazing at making like particle and effect worlds, Sournetic. Um I wanna take an like I inspiration from his worlds and make like an entire world that like my my goal is I wanna eventually make like an entire Vanessa Wolf lore world where you go in there you can find small little hidden details and if you click them it activates a cutscene that gives you a piece of her lore and that was like my entire goal and i eventually still want to do that but obviously i'm building up the skills for that right now 
Yeah, of course. You know, it, it, as something <laughs> that yeah. I always... Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah, but I, I trailed off a little bit on topic about the lore stuff there. But, like, in terms of VTubing stuff, like, yeah, no, I, I, I asked Senpai-sama to make me the art, and then later on I commissioned another good friend of mine um, to make the model for me. And I basically did that for VR chat, uploaded it, and then I later made it into a VRM file and did VC face. And that became my VTubing model. Hmm. And so, yeah. And then obviously this character I bring in from time to time, usually when I'm doing collab streams, I use this character more um, because in slight lore, I'm going to give out a little slight lore of this version of her. Um, this one, which is known as Lavetta, um, Lavetta Sapphire, um, she has an entire thing where essentially Vanessa Wolf is known as a, quote, wolf girl. In tandem, she's not actually a wolf girl. They're actually a shape-shifting demon. That's the entire story that I have of this character. And with that case, it's like, yeah, I know, fourth wall break. <laughs> <laughs> right here um to explain it um but yeah like so she's the same shifting demon and she has multiple incarnations and one of the biggest ones and why i use this for collab is her third incarnation which was part of the renaissance era um this renaissance era version of her uh, which is known as the glass princess was an entire idea where she goes through different she has the ability to go through different timelines and correct them. And so whenever I'm doing collab streams, I use her as the main message. Hmm. Yeah, like I said, very interconnected, very fucking wild. Like, it, it, as of today's date, including Vanessa Wolf and uh, Vanessa Wolf and the other incarnations, I have in total four written up. So I have four incarnations of her already. Wow. It's crazy. And it's still growing, as I mentioned. Like, it is a big storyline, and I'm enjoying every second of it when I write it. Hmm. Yeah, it's definitely definitely a story tell of its own <laughs> nature. So that's... Oof. And that's the thing. It's like, eventually, the reason why I'm making it so big is because, like, eventually I want to do something with that. Like, make it into a game or make it into a VR chat world or even just a book. Like, I eventually just want to have some way to get the entire lore of Vanessa Wolf out there. And, yeah, no, it, it is crazy of how much I'm doing for this. I'll say. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, definitely. Well, unfortunately, um, surprisingly enough we are actually out of time surprisingly enough um <laughs> I, i'm not I, surprised no, I think I'm... Uh, oh Whoa. oh oh Black is, that, fight. is that you or me <laughs> no that was you that was definitely you Damn, yeah because you froze for a good second i was like oh i was like i was looking at everything i was like it's still rolling yeah anyway um yeah but yeah, so real quick, you know, before we do end the episode, I want to give you the chance to uh, essentially, um, you know, shout out anything you want in the description, like, you know, anything you want to promote, uh, any of that type of stuff, you know, just to make sure people have a um, place to follow you at. Um, but yeah, yeah. You know, the stage uh, is yours. Simple, yeah. No, if you, if you want to have, um, I, I think one big thing, obviously, um, I will promote is... So the music I make is not only just, you know, for me. Um, I do commission work to make custom music tracks. So if you're interested in that, um, you can definitely check out my YouTube where you get a lot of the... No, none of the songs in there are commission works. Those are all just works I made in my free time. But um, yeah, if you want to get a good example of kind of the music I do, you can definitely follow my YouTube. And if you have any questions about like any sort of commission or interested in possibly commissioning me for a custom song i mean you can get a hold of me either on my discord or my twitter um i'll, I'll probably just send you over to the entire link tree which has like all of my links that's fine too <laughs> which would just probably be easier um yeah but i have a link tree uh which has like everything that you can typically find me on which is you have my youtube for my uh, youtube and soundcloud which is like where i post all the public music that i just make for fun um 
my Discord and Twitter are both in there if you want to have any like inquiries on the commissions as well as like my Twitter I use for my streaming. Um, which also my Twitch link is also in there. So if you want to follow me on Twitch and see whenever I'm going to stream again, because I only just stream whenever I have the time and, and plan something about it. Um, so my schedule is very much inconsistent right now. But um, yeah, like if you want to sometimes catch me on stream, um, by all means, like check out my Twitter, because that's usually when I'll be posting like a schedule of when I'm streaming or days I'm streaming, things like that. And that's like pretty much it and yeah i'll just send you over the link tree and it has like everything just in one go hell yeah well vanessa thank you so much for coming on the nova notes podcast <laughs> we very much appreciate i did it again this is episode number fucking five and i still did it again where i say we there ain't no <laughs> other staff this is a solo project i'm thankful <sighs> i'm gonna hate myself for that later Hey, 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 don't discount the voices in your head, all right? I, I suffer from the same thing, okay? <laughs> oh, my Lord. But anyways, thank you, Vanessa, for coming on the podcast. I appreciate it. Um, but thank you so much for listening, watching on YouTube. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. No, I'm I'm, I'm so scatterbrained right now. Uh, yes, thank you. I can tell. <laughs> yeah. How many copies did you have before this? Zero, and that's the worst part. But anyways, thank you so much for listening to the Nova Notes podcast. I've been your host, Nova Player. This has been Vanessa Wolf. All of her links will be down in the description, uh, so make sure to go check them out. Um, we will see you in the next episode. It should be episode six. Yeah. Yes. Anyways, take it easy. <laughs> And also remember to give this guy support. I know he just hit 69 and you might want to stay there for a little bit, but get him to 100 like as uh, soon as you I'm can. At, I'm at 73. <laughs> as, as this episode's aired, I'm at 73. It, it already got moved. But yes, please, uh, if you'd like to support the podcast, please feel free to like, subscribe, all that jazz. Uh, it helps me in every way, shape, and form. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. Yeah,